painful reminders of the past are not far away in the Baltics. The 23rd floor of the Hotel Viru in Estonia's capital Tallinn is still laid out as it was in the Soviet era when it acted as a listening post for the KGB. Over at Stenbock House, home to Estonia's government, a plaque shows the 10 prime ministers and 56 ministers who died in the wake of Stalin's invasion and annexation of the Baltic state in 1940. That history feels alarmingly present here in the Baltic countries, the only ex-Soviet states to now be members of the EU and NATO. Russia's annexation of Crimea and its creeping invasion of other parts of Ukraine has led to concerns that Vladimir Putin could next turn his attention to Estonia, Latvia and Lithuania. The mood in Estonia is watchful, but officials in Tallinn are above all grateful to be part of NATO with its pledge of collective defence. We cannot uh, shut off uh, our memories. Uh, we know. Uh, from our past how aggressive uh, Russia can be uh, if uh, there is no uh, very clear and uh, strict, uh, let's say, action from the West. The sense of unease in the Baltics has increased recently by a number of Russian provocations. The abduction of an Estonian security official the seizure of a Lithuanian fishing boat and attempts to prosecute Lithuanian deserters from the Soviet army in 1990. You know, I don't think that uh, these provocations add up to a sign that Russian troops are about to be landing in large numbers on the beaches anytime soon. It is precisely a way of testing while maintaining a fig leaf of plausible deniability throughout uh, just exactly how coordinated perhaps the member states, either Estonia, Latvia, Lithuania and NATO, are ready to, to respond to these kinds of tactics. Russia's pretext for invading Ukraine was to protect local Russian speakers. One concern in the Baltics is that both Estonia and Latvia have sizable ethnic Russian minorities of about a quarter of their population that Mr Putin could use as a pretext for interference. Well, I don't see here actually any, any real parallels between Ukrainian events and the Estonian one because I'm absolutely convinced uh, that people who live in Estonia uh, are the Estonians or Russians or whoever they want to live in Estonia and not in Russian Federation. And second important difference, international difference, is that, uh, well, Ukraine is not NATO and EU member Estonia is. Estonia is perhaps the success story of countries formerly under communist rule. It's gained a reputation as a liberal and tech-savvy democracy, the birthplace of Skype. Vladimir Putin once called the collapse of the Soviet Union the greatest geopolitical catastrophe of the 20th century, so the temptation must be there for him to undermine the success of Estonia and the other Baltic states. But there's little coincidence that US President Barack Obama's recent affirmation of NATO's principle of collective defence was made here in Tallinn. Richard Milne, Financial Times, Tallinn.